So today I'm going to show you how to make this really pretty spray rose. It's one of my favourites to use on wedding cakes. It's very popular among brides and grooms. Um, and once you've mastered the basics, you can then work on different varieties and different colours and different shapes, etc. Um, so we're going to start by making this one today, which I've started off with white paste and then just gone in with a tiny hint of pink and some green on the outer petals. So we start off with our cone here. Um, this one I've made just by using a polystyrene ball and then making it into a cone shape. I've got a separate tutorial in the group to show you how I did this. And I have my paste already rolled out. So I've used a pasta machine here to roll this out, which I just find so much more efficient and it gives you a really nice uniform uh, thickness to it. So I'm going to begin by cutting out five petals with my small petal cutter. And then put this back away in the bag. I'm going to work all five petals at the same time, but if you don't feel confident or your paste starts to dry out, then by all means just work on a couple and put the rest in your bag. So I just want to get these pretty thin, just using my ball tool. So I'm working all five petals. And then the edges, we're gonna go over again now. And I'll show you how we do that. So I've just shifted round so you can see the edge of my board here and I've got a, um, a bamboo skewer here which I find a really useful tool for thinning your petals. So what you want to do is have the pointed end of the petal facing away and then on the very edge of the mat you want to place the petal so it's in the corner of your cell pad. And then I'm going to take the bamboo skewer, start from the centre of the petal or the centre of the center edge of this petal and then I'm going to apply pressure at a 45 degree angle and roll to one side and then I'm going to do the same on the other side so I'm at 45 degrees push and roll and for these first petals just that one roll each way is enough and then I'm going to just turn the petal over and wrap it around the skewer just to give it a bit of a curl shape. So you see when I put that down it's now curled. So I'm going to do the same with the rest. So it's on the very edge of the pad, pointed away, bamboo skewer, give it one roll, one in the other direction, turn it over and then roll around stick and this is just to give it a bit of shape. The first roll thins the edge and then the second bit just gives it a nice curled shape which makes it easier when it's positioning on your rows. So do the same again. It just gives it a lovely natural curl. And so you've got the curl pointing away from you here. And 
And I'm applying quite a lot of pressure here to get it nice and thin. Okay, so now they're ready to go onto the bud. So I'm now going to attach my petals onto the cone. So first of all, I'm just going to line up all of the petals so that the pointed end is facing me. And I'm going to apply a bit of egg white onto the cone. And then I'm going to just cover the first petal pretty much all the way around apart from the very tip in egg white. And then I'm going to wrap this petal around the cone. So if you can see, I've just got the petal positioned a little bit higher than the point of the cone. And the curved end, I'm going to fold in and then just wrap the rest around, sort of pinch the end to secure it. Wrap the edge around to form a nice spiral. And you want this fairly tight. I'm now going to apply egg wash to, oh sorry, egg white to the other petals. So I'm going to go from about the centre of the petal down towards the point, and then another V shape going up onto the curved shape of the petal. So let's go down and V shape. And effectively, this is just leaving the other half without any egg white for the time being so that it remains open. So to position the second petal, I'm going to have it opposite where the edge of this petal is. So opposite this edge, I'm going to position it slightly higher up than the first and just secure on the curved side. You want to leave this side open and take the second petal and then that's just going to sit inside this open petal and just kind of give it a bit of a wiggle to allow it to sit inside and you're still keeping these flaps open I'm going to go in with the third petal just position that around so they're all quite close together in a sort of spiral shape and then go in with the fourth and again that's just going to sit in nice and snugly so once they're all secured and you've got them sort of open like this I'm just going to go around and start to close the doors so have a play with how you feel happy and then you can get a tiny bit of egg white and just place it towards the bottom of the petal. You want to keep the top nice and open, so just secure the bottom. And you can play around to make it a little bit tighter if you want, just by tugging the petals. So you're looking for something like that. Okay, I'm now going to cut out my next layer. So we're going for the next size up of petal cutter. And again, so much quicker having all of your paste rolled out. So it's all ready to go now. So I'll cut out another five. So we had five for the first layer. We're going to have five for the second layer. To do exactly the same thing as we did for the first layer. I'm going to thin the edges. Using my ball tool.
So in the same way that I did the first layer, I'm going to thin the edges with the bamboo skewer again. So it's the same technique, you just might need to do an extra roll either side if it doesn't thin straight away. So I've just done two on each side there. And then I'm going to do the same, just roll it around to give it a bit of shape. Now that's got a nice curve to it. And then very simply, I'm going to apply the egg white in the same way as before, so doing my little V-shape on the curved side of the petal. And you're going to attach these petals in the same way in a spiral shape around the rosebud. So you start off with your first one, just tucking into one of these open petals here. And once you've tucked that one in, it's going to sit slightly higher than the other one, but only a fraction. You can just close off this open one from the layer before. So I'm going to tuck in my second petal. And you can have a bit of a play with how loose or how tightly you do the petals on this, depending on what shape you want to achieve for your flower. So I want this to be fairly, fairly snug. And my last one. And you should find, if you position them right, that five petals should bring you neatly round to form a perfect spiral. So I'm now going to again secure the bottom of each petal and start to close the gap, but leaving the top open. Oops. Okay, so once you've reached that stage, you can then have a little play and start to tease the petals into a nice natural shape. So I don't like mine to look too uniform, so I'll have some more open than others. I think I'm happy with that. So moving on to the next layer. So I've got the next size up. Going to cut another five petals out. Okay. 
and then I'm going to thin them in exactly the same way. So when I thin my petals, I tend to start from the center, but you don't need to worry too much about the very center and start to work my way out. Always finishing on the edge. And to get the very edge of the petal, you want your ball tool to be positioned halfway on the petal and halfway off. And for this layer, I'm going to use my petal veiner. So I'm now going to vein each of the petals. And again, if you don't feel like you have enough time to do this in one go without all the petals drying out, then just do a couple at a time. So now I'm going to do the bamboo skewer. I'm going to fold these petals in half just to make sure I know where the midway point is. And then I'm going to use the same technique to just roll out. But as it's a wider petal, you can go a little bit further around with it. Okay. I'm just going to turn it over now and use the pointed end of my skewer just to open the petals out. So I'm just kind of rolling it to give it a curved shape. I'll do the same on the other side. So your petals are kind of pointing, coming to a vague point like that. And then I'm going to very lightly apply a little bit of pressure at the bottom just to give it a slight curve. And then I'll get my soup spoons. And I'm just going to position the petal over the end just to give it a bit of shape. So I'll do the same with the others. I'm just going to fold it in half. Roll along the edge to thin it. And then just curl the edge of the pestle, coming to a bit of a point. And then just very gently Add a bit of shape to the bottom, let it dry. So I'm now going to apply the next layer of petals onto the bud. So I'm going to apply egg white to all of my petals first. This time I'm going to do a line down from the middle down to the bottom in the centre. And then I'm going to do the same along the edge of each side of the petal. 
Just make sure that you've only got a small amount of egg white on your brush here. You don't want the petals to get too wet. Then I'm just going to take the bud and there's no set position for these petals so we're not going around in a spiral like we were before. So I've decided I'm going to put this one here. Again it's sitting slightly higher than last time and I'm going to fold both sides in rather than leaving one open this time. And take your second petal and decide where you want it to go. So I'm going to position my second one there. But there really is no set order for this. So I do a different position each time. Which just makes each flower unique. So third one I'm going to do over the gap that's still open. fourth one out there you could also apply the egg white um, one petal at a time so if you're not too sure where to position it then you can just hold the petal without any egg white on up to the flower and have a play with how it looks before you commit to sticking it So I feel like there needs to be an extra one on this side, so I'm going to put my last petal in there. Like that. So I'm now going to move on to my final layer. And so we're going one size up again. And I'm going to cut out five petals, but I may not use them all. Depends on how full you want your flower to be and how open as to how many petals you apply at this stage. I'm actually going to use the end of my rolling pin here to thin as the petals are starting to get larger now. I find this is a bit easier because it has a larger surface area. Certainly when it comes to these larger petals you might just want to work on a couple at a time to prevent them from drying out. I'm now just going to vein them in the same way. So this time round I'm going to fold them again. And then where the creases at the end of the petal. I'm just going to rub the pointed end just to give a slight indentation into the end of the petal. And now I'm just going to use the same way, just roll to thin the edge. You want to go a little bit further around the petal this time as it's quite large. And the same again going the other way. And 
and then I'm going to curve the petals back in the same way that I did before. It's using the pointed end of the skewer. So I have a pointed petal like that. And then using the end of my rolling pin, I'm just going to shape it a little bit again. And then put it on the soup spoon. Leave it to dry for a little bit. So I'll just repeat that with the others. Slight indentation. So now that they're all shaped, I'm going to leave them to dry for a short while. This will depend on uh, the humidity um, of your climate, and what kind of type of weather it is on that day. So I just want them to firm up a little bit, which will make them easier to shape when I put them on the flower. So my petals are now dried and become slightly leathery. So you can see they hold their shape quite nicely now. Uh, there's still a bit of movement at the bottom, so I can still bend it without it breaking. So again, I'm going to do the line down the, from the centre down to the bottom in the middle. And then along each bottom edge, coming to the point. And I'll do the same on each petal. And then again, the same as the layer before, there's no real order to where you want to put them. Just have a play, decide what looks natural to you. And positioning slightly lower than the layer before. And I'm going to go for quite an open shape here. So I'm going to let my petals fall away a bit.
I'm just going to add a little bit more oops, of my egg white here because I want that one to sit slightly higher. And at this point you can decide how many petals you want to add. So if you wanted to, you could leave it at that. I'm just going to see how this extra petal looks, whether I want it or not. Yeah, so I think I'm going to add an extra one here. So depending on how dry your petals are now, or how open you want your flower to look, you can either let this set um, in your foam block now as it is and you'll probably find that it will start to open up a little bit more um, or what you could do if you don't want them to open up anymore and you feel like they're falling down too much just turn the flower over and bend this and hook it over something to hang it upside down and that will just stop it from opening up too much. So you could let it dry for say 20 minutes hanging upside down and then if you wanted them to open up, up a bit more then you turn it around put it back in your block. So I think I'm going to hang this upside down because I don't want these to drop too much. And then once they've dried up enough we can make the calyx. So I'm now going to make the calyx. So I've got a small amount of green florist paste here. I'm just kneading it out. And then I've got a cell pad. I'm going to use the medium hole. So I take a little bit of vegetable fat, rub that around the hole, and then I'm just going to press the paste onto the mat. Give it a bit of a dust of corn flour. And then I'm going to roll it out with my cell pin. So once that's rolled out, I'm just going to turn it over. Take my calyx cut here. This is about a medium size. And just position that. So now turning my cell pad over to the softer side, dust that and she will use my ball tool to just enlarge each of the sepals. So I'm widening them slightly as well as lengthening them as I thin them. Once I'm happy with the shape, I'm just going to take some small scissors and cut a few slits in the sides. Now again I do this quite randomly so I might do one on one side and two on the other just kind of mix it up as I go around. Like and now I'm just going to take a small amount of egg white, place that into the centre and then about halfway down each of the sepals. And then I'll put the centre of the wire through the middle, push that up towards the flower and then you turn round and just fold in how you like. You can either have these sort of a mixture of curling out or you can have them more flush against 
the rose. I like to do a mixture, but just bear in mind that when it comes to arranging them on the cake, these are super fragile, so you can easily break them. So you might not want to have them too open. And then I'm just going to narrow this excess paste here down the stem. Again, if you want your flower to sit completely flush against the cake, you could just have a completely flat calyx and not have this bulge here. But I'm going to have a small amount, so I think it looks good. So then leave that to dry before dusting. So I'm now ready to dust my rose. And I've got a pale cream here, a tiny bit of pink and some green and yellow. So I'm gonna start off just by dusting all over with a bit of this cream. So I'm not going completely cream, it's just kind of catching parts of the white so that I've got a bit of depth of colour. And I'm going to do the same on the back as well. Okay, now I'm just going to go in with a bit of pink right in the centre. And I'm now going to mix a little bit of the cream with the pink just to sort of lighten it up slightly. And just bring this colour out. I'm going to catch some of the other petals further out with this beigey pink colour. And then I'm going to take a bit of green and yellow, mix that with some beige to create a lighter green. And I'm going to catch some of these very outer petals. Go in with a bit more cream, lighten it up. And you'll find that some of the outer guard petals on roses have this kind of greeny tinge to them. Like that. And then finally, I'm just going to dust my calyx. So I'm going to go for a darker green. And then in with a bit more yellow just at the tips to lighten up. And that's your finished rose.